Well guys, a lot of you have been asking for this. This is the LSL. It is supposed to be an electro pick gun. I got it from Banggood, $139.95. So quite, uh, quite a hefty price tag. Looks kind of weird. Uh, it comes in a very nice nylon bag. And I think you can figure out where that's made from, but it is a very nice bag. Pretty good quality build on it. Uh, it is hard plastic. I've dropped it a couple times. It did kind of surprise me when I pulled the trigger the first time. And you'll see why in a few moments. Uh, the tip here looks kind of weird, and I was a little concerned with that. I really didn't understand, but it's just a quick release. When you pull this spring-loaded plunger down, it allows you to replace the tips very, very quickly. I think you can see that on the camera. It's got a little LED light here, and you'll notice it is corded, but it is corded to an external battery pack. It provides a lot of energy. It is. It comes with a little recharger, so you can recharge it, obviously. It doesn't have replaceable batteries. Uh, when you plug it in, the plug is indexed, so you can't plug it in wrong. So let me go ahead and do that. And right away when you plug it in, uh, the light on the front of the gun will come on. But I think that's just if you're in a darkened hallway or something, kind of lets you get everything set up, gives you an external light. Because when you pull the trigger, nothing happens until you get to this potentiometer and you turn it on. Of course, the red light indicator light comes on. And I'm just going to barely, I'm going to turn it on and then turn it up just a little bit. And that potentiometer will regulate how much voltage goes to this gun. Now this is fully adjustable. I was surprised by this. So when you pull the trigger, it gives you a one in, about a one second burst of energy. Now this is the lowest level. And that's kind of what I would expect from an electric pig. But this thing got a lot of extra power built. And I'll turn it up just a little bit more. It's not even halfway yet. And again, that's a lot of energy from an electric pig. And now I'm going to turn it all the way up, just in the interest of saving time. Stand back. If you're wearing headphones, take them off now, I warn you, because this is very loud. Again, you get the, you get the one second burst every time you pull that trigger. You have to release it and pull it again. At that level of energy, I would imagine that there's probably going to be some damage done to the lock, but it will definitely jiggle those pins. So. I'm going to go ahead and show you. There are a bunch of tips that come with this. Let me go ahead and move the gun out of here. I'm going to line all the tips up, and we're going to discuss them. And then we're going to try it out on some of these locks that I've got lined up here. All right, guys, if you're texturally oriented, so if you don't want me to go through this part, just uh, take a screenshot of this, read it, and it tells you everything that you have. There are 25 different bits here. Now these are not all for dimple locks and I've got them kind of sorted here. You have two what I would call traditional locks and one is kind of a straight blade. I couldn't find any locks that, that would fit into in my collection nor this one. This is not a Yale but uh, it does have warding in it so I would imagine in China these are probably quite useful. Um, Again, uh, all of these are really for Chinese keywade uh, locks. I've seen many of these. In fact, I've picked many. These are three different double rows of locks, and uh, they are not the same keyway, though. So you have three of the double row traditional pin tumblers. Then you have three that I really don't know. I have never seen a keyway that would use these. So I would imagine you have pins on both sides and dimples along the top. But again, I've never seen that. Uh, you have one with the dimples on the top of the bow. It's a what I call a smiley lock. There's nothing on the bottom, but all the pins are on the top of that one. So you have one of those. You have, I'm not going to pick all the rest of them up, but you have five of them with double rows, and we'll use one of these in a minute. Uh, you have five with single, and these are the true smiley locks. I got a couple of these. We'll see if we can't find the correct size to see how well this gun works on those. We have three with the dimple pick or dimple pins on the right side. We have only one with the dimple on the left side. So if you are in the UK or Europe, uh, your pins generally on, the, on that side, you're only going to have one of those. And then you have two with double dimples on the right. You have no with, none with double dimples on the left. So you're totally out of luck there. All right, I do have some Chinese locks located out here. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Sort through these. I'm going to find the right picks. I got a couple with smileys, so we'll see if we can't bump those open. 
I have one. It is a double pin. It's a cutaway, but it's still a perfectly good lock. Uh, it has double pins, and I've got the key for that. It is a what I call upside-down smiley. Works beautifully. We'll see if we can't get into that one. And the last one, I have a dimple lock that I found. One of these that fits in. It is traditional size. It's on the right. And I think we can get this to work, too. So maybe we can bump all these open. Let's see how well this gun really works. All right, let's see if we can get these locks open. I have, first of all, this, I can tell you right away that not everything is included. I had a couple of these smiley locks, and while they look very similar, they're slightly different. I can't find one of the bits to fit into this guy, so we're out of luck. We're not going to get him. But we will get this Mindy lock. Uh, it does work perfectly. It is a five-pinner. Very smooth, very strong spring on that shackle. It's a five pinner and it looks like it's going to be quite a challenge. We've got some really serious high low, high low, which is really pretty a, a good problem for to try to bump uh, something like that open. I did find a bit that does fit this one and it slides in pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and take the gun and the way it works is you pull that plunger down, you slide your bit in there and you release that plunger and it kind of traps that bump key inside of there. I am going to turn this on very low setting so it'll look like this, earphones off. So not a lot of energy on that. Let's just see if we can... Now I will tell you this is spring-loaded either way so you can open it to the left or to the right. So the instruction video says turn it very slightly and that way you start bumping. If you already have a little bit of torque on it when it opens it'll automatically spin for you. So let's try that. This does turn clockwise uh, so I'm going to hold him like like this. He is locked, by the way. I'm going to turn it and then hang on to him because this thing is very powerful. It will bounce it out of your hand. I'm trying to hold the lock as steady as I can, and we don't have an open. I just don't think there's enough energy there. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit, and then we're going to try it again. I can already see bits of metal coming out of the keyway. And we don't have an open yet. Alright, I'm going to turn the energy up a little bit more. And give it another shot. There we go. Now we got an open. All right. So the thing does work, at least on Mindy Smiley Locks. Let's try it on another one. Um, let me take this bit out. And I have another one. This is for the cutaway. This is probably going to be a little more. It's twice the number of pins. Ten pinner. I got the right one. It slides in there very nicely. And I'm going to leave it on the same power level. It seems to be about right. Come on. Get in there. All right. Slide it in there. I'm going to hang on to the lock now because it should be in a visor and a door. I get it, but we're making do here. All right, it's very slight turn, and let's get an open on this guy. Again, I can see really small bits of metal coming out of this thing. This is probably not good for the longevity of your, lock, of your lock. Yeah, I had a piece of metal, actually. I don't know if you saw that. That just flew out of there. All right, I'm going to try it counterclockwise. All right, I'm going to turn this all the way up to the maximum. I think this lock's never going to be the same. All right, I'm going to turn it down very, very low. Maybe it uh, is partial to that. Who knows? Counterclockwise. Clockwise. All right, let's call this one a no-go. That's not going to work. I think it's just got too many pins and might have something to do with my lack of experience with the tool. All right, let's take that out. I got one more. This is a normal dimple. 
I have the bit for it, and here's what the key looks like. Again, very, very challenging. We have four very deep cuts, and then especially that guy is going to be hard, and then some very high cuts back there. So, we'll see what happens on this. It is a seven pinner. Works beautifully. Let's see if we can get into this with this bump gun. All right. Again, hang on. I'm going to turn to the right, starting on the lower energy. I would have bet that we'd have better luck with this thing. I'm going to go counterclockwise. All right, I'm going to turn the energy up to about halfway. Again, I'm seeing bits of metal coming out of the key. All right, I'm going to go counterclockwise. And tighten this screw up. He's about to come out of there. A lot of vibration on this thing. All right, maximum setting. I got no go on that. I don't know if it's too many pins or again my lack of experience, but not having a lot of luck here. Uh, the only one I got open was a Mindy, but you know, I don't really have a lot of these kind of locks. Normally I would face a normal keyway, but unfortunately, even though we got a huge pile of these things, none of them fit a pin tumbler lock that we normally see. So how would we get in here? Well, I do have bump keys and here's a bump key that does fit this keyway but it won't fit into that, uh, in whoa, into the gun. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sacrifice this bump key just as an experiment. You notice it, I can probably cut this pattern out. So I'm just going to draw on here. I'm going to cut the same pattern as it'll fit into the gun, and then we'll have a normal bump key. We'll see if I can't get that to work. That would be ideal. All right, got that thing ground down. I think that'll fit. It's about the same width. Uh, and if I just went ahead and used the same keyhole, looks like it's going to work. Here's what the uh, original key looks like. It's a five pinner, and we got some pretty good bidding on this one as well. Might be quite a challenge. Now this is not going to be the traditional bump key where we slide it in and then give it a wrap. Instead, it's going to be oscillating back and forth. So we'll see how well it works. Again, uh, I'm going to put this in the quick release, and I've got this set. I'm going to set it on low on the low setting. So now it's just going to oscillate in and out like that. Let's see if we can make this thing work. Again, I'm going to put light tension to the right to clockwise. Turn this up so you can see a little bit. Okay, I think that's too gentle. I'm going to turn it up about halfway. It's not striking the keys with the, or the pins with enough energy to cause them to bounce, and that's what we're after here. All right, I'm going to, again, turn it a little bit clockwise. Try it counterclockwise. All right, got no luck. Let me turn it up all the way counterclockwise. That actuator is turning because this is a thumb turn. It'll it floats freely back there, so we do not have an open. I'm trying to open the lock. All right, again, clockwise. Again, you can see metal starting to come off. That might be off the key. I really don't know. All right, I'm going to have to call this a no-go. It might work on Chinese locks that you happen to have the right key for, but 
Unless you're willing to put a lot of work into making your own bump keys and trying it this way, I just don't think you're going to get a lot of use out of this LSL. It's a quality gun, and I'm sure it works perfectly fine on Chinese locks. If that's the kind of lock that you face all the time, then I'd probably recommend it. But if you're trying to bump normal, uh, what I would call North American or European locks, if you don't have access to the right bump key, you're probably not going to have a lot of luck with this. Anyway, fellas, there you go. Um, if you'd like to win this, you know what to do. There's the website. I'm going to give this away next Saturday. Go to that website, register, hit the big purple button, and then register to win. Maybe next Saturday you'll be the lucky winner of this LSL. I hate to call it an electro pick, but it's more of a bump gun, a dim Chinese dimple lock bump gun. Thanks, guys.